Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. PCI Express 4.0 NVMe SSDs are here. Are they worth it? Should you pay the price premium to get one or should you buy the old technology of 3.0 drives? PCI Express 4 launched this summer in 2019 with the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs and the X570 chipset from AMD. It represents a doubling of performance of transfer rate from 3.0 devices, which have been with us for quite some time. I have here one of the first drives. We're going to benchmark it and compare it to some of the 3.0 drives, and then we'll see whether or not it's worth spending the kind of money that these things are currently commanding. Today, I have this premium Gigabyte Aorus 1TB PCI Express 4.0 drive, and this thing has a monster copper heatsink. I will zoom in and turn it around as I move it here. The actual M.2 drive itself is not that large, but this thing is large and heavy, and it does its job because the drive gets quite warm when it's in full speed operation, so it's very, very effective. And it looks quite nice with its Aorus branding. Today, we're going to compare this new 4.0 drive with two drives from the recent 8-drive NVMe Roundup review, the 2019 SSD video I did. Link to that in the video description below. If you would like a deep dive into NVMe, MLC versus TLC versus QLC, uh, what's important in terms of warranty and drive write life rating and how the various drives use cache, SLC cache and DRAM cache in order to provide performance, as well as specific recommendations about what to buy, that's a long form video with a ton of information. I won't repeat it all here or this would be a very long video. Go watch that if you're interested. Here's the short, short version. The Intel 660P, represented here by a two terabyte drive, keeping the price similar to the others, is a QLC drive with a 400 terabyte total drive write life rating and a five year warranty. It's a 3.0 drive. And then we have the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, the current king of the hill in terms of 3.0 drives, five year warranty, 600 terabyte total drive write life rating. This is a one terabyte drive, about $230 or so. Great software, great data migration. Uh, Samsung really does a very good job and it's the standard by which I measure all other SSDs. Our test bench today is represented by the X570 MSI Meg Ace motherboard. This is my standard test bench. It's what you're gonna see all of my various graphics cards, SSDs, RAM, and CPU tests over the next year or so. We have the Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 cores, 24 thread processor. Not that it really matters for this comparison, but that's what's there. 32 gigs of DDR4 3200CL16 and a Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti video card which doesn't mean anything for SSD testing, but that's what's there. Today, we're gonna to be running our test with Crystal Disk Mark. It is a free benchmark tool you can download and run yourself. It allows you to do various tests, both sequential and random on your drives, both hard drives and SSDs, but it's worth noting two important things. You need to make sure that your settings match whichever benchmarks you're comparing them to, and you need to make sure that you're testing on an empty drive. You can test on drives with data, but it will affect the results. All of these drives were freshly formatted with no data on them. They were not the boot drives in the machine. They were all installed on the second M.2 slot on this board. So that makes the uh, tests and results consistent, predictable, and reliable. As far as the actual numbers, Q depth and thread count, that's pretty obvious in the benchmark charts. What isn't noted there is the fact that I ran each test in a batch of four runs each with four gigabytes of data. That is not the standard in the dropdowns in Crystal Benchmark when you install the program. I ran those tests three times each with a reboot in between to make sure the tests were consistent and repeatable between runs. So that was a total of 12 runs of each of the different test reads and writes at each of the different QDEPs and thread counts between these drives. Before we get to the benchmark charts themselves, let's talk in more detail about the specs of this drive because actually they are impressive. Whether or not that translates to real world value is something for you to decide but they are impressive on paper. Read speed of five gigabytes per second, write speed of 4.5 gigabytes per second. That is faster than any 3.0 drive because it's faster than the 4X 3.0 NVMe M.2 interface. The IOPS that they report and the random speeds are going to vary depending upon which test and result you run. Sequential is fairly easy to compare, so we won't get into that in too much detail, other than to say that the numbers they provide are 
within reason for what manufacturers report for drives because they, of course, always report best possible case scenario. It does have a five-year warranty and this is impressive. 1.8 petabytes of total drive right life warranty. That is three times the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, which has 600. So 1800 terabytes versus 600 terabytes. That's impressive. Now, is the actual NAND flash on here superior in some way to the Samsung drive? I don't think so. I'm sorry, it really isn't. It is Toshiba 3D NAND, which this is Samsung's 3D NAND. It's, it's got a longer warranty. But the truth is uh, various journalists and tech reviewers who have done destructive drive testing, basically they've taken SSDs, they've put them in a machine and they write to them 24 hours a day until the drives fail, have found that all the drives write way beyond their warranty. The, the warranty time is just basically what they guarantee 100% every single drive will work no matter what, even in a hostile environment, which is that the temperatures are too hot and the, the conditions aren't very good. The truth of the matter is I've never run an SSD out. I don't know anyone who's run an SSD out in a normal desktop user machine. And so that's an impressive stat, but don't buy stats if they aren't going to matter. I've got numerous drives that I use on a very, very heavy basis, and I've never even come close to wearing a drive out. So whether or not that's impressive or interesting to you is a personal choice. It's nice, but I wouldn't give it too much credit. Beyond the stated specs, it also has a one gigabyte DDR4 DRAM cache, which is nice. That'll smooth out reads and writes and extend the drive endurance, which is part of it, although that has a DRAM cache as well. Um, but that doesn't uh, improve overall experience and make it more of a premium drive. It also has an eight channel controller, which as you're about to see in the uh, multi Q depth and multi thread count random tests really makes this drive shine. Of course, the eight channel controller, it's worth noting, doesn't do any good at thread count of one and Q depth of one, which we're also gonna take a look at. And having said that, I've talked nearly enough. Why don't we take a look at some benchmarks? Our first result is the crowd pleaser, otherwise known as how to sell SSDs. The red bar is the new PCI Express 4.0 drive. And as you can see, it's clearly the fastest one. Case closed, review finished, right? Well, don't run away just so quickly because the fact of the matter is sequential transfer rates look pretty in charts and it's the number that's advertised by most drive companies. I am by no means calling out Gigabyte here. Everybody does this, but that big huge number does not necessarily transfer into real world performance unless all you do all day long is file copies. And if that's what you do, then you don't need any of this. I mean, hard drives do file copies just fine. Instead, what we want to look at is random performance at various Q depth and thread depths to see how well these drives perform in the real world. Moving from sequential Q depth of 32 to random Q depth of 32, you'll notice something interesting. The performance compresses to make all of these drives very, very similar, but they're also a lot slower. We went from nearly five gigabytes per second on the new Aorus NVMe 4.0 drive to just 590. Notice all the drives ended up being very similar in performance. The raw NAND, the actual flash on the drive in terms of 4K random read and write speeds at Q depth of 32 with a thread count of one is actually remarkably similar across various NVMe drives. This, however, is not a normal desktop user workload. So ignore these numbers. Let's take a look at a different set. Q depth of eight, thread count of eight. Now we're giving the CPU eight threads to work with and we're giving Q depth of eight, which is a much lower Q depth, but this is much more of a multi-user environment running multiple virtual machines, multiple programs, individually tasking the drives with reads and writes. Notice that there is now a separation between the two premium drives and the budget 660p. 1.8 gigabytes per second versus 2.1 between the gigabyte and the Samsung on the read speed versus just under one terabyte per second on the read speed on the 660p. This is the penalty of that QLC NAND, but then again, it's worth noting that that is a two terabyte drive and costs less than the two one terabyte premium drives. Depends upon what you want, the best performance or the best value. 
Having said that, this is also not normal. This is not what you as a single user desktop user, whether you're gaming or content creating or watching Twitch streams or recording or live streaming, this is not what you will see. These numbers look impressive on charts, but they are virtually meaningless to normal people. Let's take a look at the chart you should be looking at. Q depth of one, thread count of one, 4K random reads and writes. This is what normal people do with their normal computers, running a game, having a Chrome window open, watching a YouTube or Twitch stream, just using their computer, playing a game, maybe doing some light content creation. This is a single user desktop workload. Notice that in terms of read speed, none of these drives look nearly as impressive as those sequential numbers. 61 megabytes per second on the PCI Express 4.0 drive. That's down from five gigabytes per second in sequential. That is not a misprint. It really is that slow in random reads of single Q depth and single thread count. The Samsung is faster at 78. Samsung makes some of the best drives in the world, which is why they're so expensive. And ironically here, the Samsung is a little bit less expensive than the Gigabyte due to it not being the new shiny 4.0 drive. But the reality is in terms of normal desktop workloads, the Samsung is actually a faster drive. However, Notice that in terms of random read speeds, the two terabyte Intel 660p holds its own with the other two drives. In the real world, you will not notice a difference between any of these drives. I have used them as boot drives. I have them installed in multiple machines. You really won't notice a difference as long as you go with a reasonably decent modern NVMe drive. Notice the random write speeds of 163 are a deficit, and if you hammer on that Intel drive extended, if you open up Steam, Uplay, Origin, and Epic Games, and all four try to update games at the same time, and you have a super fast internet connection like I do, yes, it will tank the performance of that drive. But how often do you do that, and how often do you have 12 games that need to be updated at once, and how many of you have gigabit fiber connections to really hammer those drives? I, I know this is really a review of the PCI Express 4 drives, but I'm going to hold to my recommendation I did recently. Go buy the Intel 660p. It is an incredible value for the money. Less than $200 for two terabytes, less than $100 for one terabyte. Real world, it's an amazing value for the money. Coming back to the sequential chart for just one second, I really think this point needs to be hammered home. Many people look at the sequential advertised rates of these drives and they may very well say, wait a minute, the new 4.0 drive does five gigabytes per second read speed versus two gigabytes on the Intel 660p. That's two and a half times faster. Man, if I'm building a premium machine, I absolutely have to get the best drive. I've got to get the, the newest drive. It's going to make all the difference. I don't want a slow drive in my machine. The problem here is while this is the let's sell some SSDs chart and quick go buy the super premium drive, the reality is it does not reflect what normal desktop users playing games and streaming and just using their computer will actually experience. Thus the huge disparity in performance between this chart and this one. And this is really the takeaway I want you to take from this video, which is all those sequential numbers mean very, very little for most people. It's the random and it's the Q depth of one random that really matters. In short, the new PCI Express 4.0 drive from Gigabyte does just what it promises. It does read at five gigabytes per second sequential speed. It writes at 4.5 gigabytes sequential speed write speed, and its random performance is right in line with where it should be. Given the current state of NAND flash, given the current state of uh, controller technology and NAND technology, it's about right where it should be. It is worth noting that the NAND flash across various drives is not as different as many companies would have you think. NAND is, NAND is not NAND, but it sort of is. There are variations in terms of performance, longevity, reliability, dependability, and performance, but not two, three, four, five X in terms of current production drives. That wonderful performance of the PCI Express 4.0 bus doesn't mean anything unless you're doing high speed sequential transfer rates. Random performance does not care whether you have a 3.0 or a 4.0 bus. The hard cold reality is if you're only doing one thing at a time and you have one piece of data coming in or out at a time, the eight channel controller doesn't do you any good because you can only read and write on one of those channels at a time if you've got Q depth of one and thread count of one and that's why those numbers look so low. And that is true whether it's the Gigabyte or the Samsung, the Intel or any of the other drives. You're not going to get much beyond about 60 to 70 megabytes per second 
when you're looking at Q depth and thread counts of one and one respectively. It will take a leap forward in terms of NAND performance, the actual individual NAND cells, not the fact that they can strike them across eight channels, uh, the fact that they can put in DRAM buffers and other things in order to improve performance, but the actual NAND itself will have to improve. And despite what all these companies would want you to believe, the actual core NAND, the flash memory cells within these drives are not as different as you'd think. They're all 3D layered NAND. Uh, that's QLC, these are TLC. It's just an additional bit per cell, but it's the same basic technology. Drive performance really depends upon what you're doing, about whether you're doing sequential work, random work, single user workload, or multi-user workload. Here's the long and short of it. At the current $250 launch price of this drive, as nice as it is, as pretty as it is, as fast as the sequential transfer is, it doesn't make any difference for normal users. And at that price, you would be far better served to buy something else. Interestingly enough, this Samsung 970 EVO Plus isn't even the deal at the moment. While I'm recording this video, the non-plus version of this drive, which is like 5% slower, you'll never notice it, is a lot less expensive. It's $170 on Amazon at the moment. I'll link to that in the video description below versus uh, $230 for this. Basically the same drive for $50 less. If you want performance, that's the deal. But the real deal on this desk honestly remains the two terabyte Intel 660p. In the real world on a single user desktop, you will not notice the, the performance difference between this drive and either of these, but here's what you will notice. Two terabytes for $185. That's an impressive value for the money. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, that's what the comment section is for. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what future SSD type testing, if any, you would like to see. Other suggestions are always welcome. I don't have time to respond to every comment, but I promise I do read them all. Links in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg for all of these items, as I mentioned, as well as the non-plus version of that linked down in the description below. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Gigabyte, for sending me this drive. I wish I could give it more of a two thumbs up, but the honest, harsh truth of the reality is for $250, the real world performance doesn't justify that price. When the price comes down just a bit, uh, when these start to become more common and the price starts to drift down into the mid 150 to 170 range, I'll feel differently about it. Then when there's not much price premium, then yeah, by all means get one. But at 250, I'm sorry, but it's gotta be a pass. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.